figures provided me are correct. For calendar year 2010, Malaysia had 24.5 million arrivals compared to our 3.5 million arrivals. And that is quite shocking. Can, uh, can you explain to us, Mr. Secretary, why this is possible to analyze this? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, um, the, the, I think among all the ASEAN countries, the Malaysian numbers have to be seen with a little suspicion because there's a lot of cross-border traffic between Singapore and Malaysia. As you know, the, the fuel in Malaysia is cheaper than the fuel in Singapore, so every, every weekend there are people crossing the border. Uh, now, be that as it may, Malaysia still gets a lot more tourists than uh, we do. Let's say if we discount 50% of the 24 million, that's still 12 million. Now, there are many reasons that, that, I, that account for this, and I, I've uh, mentioned them earlier in this meeting. One is that um, they have better air access, uh, they have better connectivity, even if they are, uh, there's, there are two Malaysias, there's a peninsular Malaysia and there's a, uh, uh, an island Malaysia in uh, Borneo. Uh, they have better infrastructure. Uh, their, their products, if you, if you have been to Kota Kinabalu, it's a, a much uh, better developed product uh, than what that we have here. What we have is uh, natural beauty that, uh, that is superior to theirs, except that we don't have the, the, the access and the connectivity. Um, they have been able to also develop a, a culture of tourism and most significantly, they have a promotions budget that is eight times our promotions budget. Uh, so it's hard for us to compete on the uh, level of promotions alone, not to mention the other aspects of uh, tourism. It is not only marketing that sells the country, it's all these other all these other matters that we're trying to fix in the National Tourism Development Plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Although, Mr. Chairman, that may be correct with respect to the number numbers of arrival, but with respect to total receipts, uh, it's also basically the same, a multiple of something close to seven. To be correct, uh, it's 6.4 times more than Philippine receipts. So how do we explain that? If, if the numbers are proportional, then we have the same uh, number of uh, spending per, per tourist. No, no. The, that, the, it, it shows that maybe the tourist arrivals number for Malaysia is valid, instead of what you said earlier, that this may be distorted by uh, people uh, crisscrossing because of uh, uh, buying gasoline. Um, if, if they are... If they are counting their, their numbers uh, uh, properly, well, the purchase of gasoline already counts for, for spending and uh, shopping. Uh, so that could account for the, uh, the spending that they do. Uh, I, I really don't have the uh, deep knowledge of this, but uh, what we're trying to do is uh, to increase our visitor spend by improving our connectivity within the country so that they are able to stay longer. We're also trying to attract um, certain markets that would spend more. In other words, we don't want to attract the mass market um, so that the spend per tourist is higher. This this, this all the, the effort that's going on right now, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you. And talking of uh, expenses, it would appear also that the expense the spending per tourist in the Philippines is among the lowest in Southeast Asia. 0.79 dollar, uh, according to 0.79, uh, this is the figure given to me, compared with the 1.54, double uh, that of Singapore. Uh, Singapore has doubled. Thailand is 1.25. So one way of expanding uh, our tourism income is uh, to expand the per tourist uh, expenditure instead of uh, just uh, increasing the number of tourist arrivals. 
Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, that is correct. That is the effort. That's why we said from the very beginning that we will try to develop value tourism. And what we mean by value tourism is the revenue, not, not the class of tourists that we get. In other words, those who stay in the five star, but those who will stay longer and spend more in this country. And that's why we are trying to develop the infrastructure, we're trying to develop the product, uh, and we're trying to develop the access so that uh, uh, people will, will be able to spend more if they don't have to, oh, in the country, if they don't have to spend so much just getting here. Uh, they are, our model really is Indonesia more than, uh, more than Thailand or, uh, or Malaysia. Because the, the spend per tourist in Indonesia is, I think, one of the highest in Asia. We would like to recognize the uh, speaker, Bobo, again. But this Indonesia is not really that high. It's only one, uh, one as against our 0.79. It's lower than Thailand and uh, Singapore. Well, anyway, now my other question would be with respect to Philippine icons. Uh, especially showbiz icons and the chairman. Are we in any way uh, harnessing the potential of showbiz icons like Chavis and of course uh, our colleague here, uh, Congressman Pacquiao, is a, not only a sports icon but a showbiz icon. Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, uh, yes, we are trying to, uh, I think there's an effort to get uh, Congressman Pacquiao to be appearing in advertisement. We, we try to uh, and, uh, encourage uh, Charisse Pempenko to be a, one of the uh, singers in our new, we have a new uh, a remake of an old jingle, Taranabya uh, Hetayo, where there are 57 artists. Uh, who appeared in that uh, in that jingle, uh, but she was busy. Thank you. Now the other one is IT. Uh, I remember last year I asked uh, somebody from the DOT about the use of IT, and uh, the person I asked uh, about it was the wrong person because she didn't know what uh, I was talking about. Are you utilizing IT, for example? In the case of uh, YouTube, Facebook, etc., etc., a guy like Christopher Lau was able to generate about uh, more than 25,000 hits in just three hours. So, in other words, if you can find the right uh, mix for a message, uh, maybe you can have as many hits also in a few hours uh, with respect to some tourist destinations. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, yes, uh, we do have we do have multiple websites, but uh, we also are bidding out uh, a contract for a uh, a new media, a new media, so that we will have a common uh, look and feel for all. We will integrate all the websites and include the social media aspects, having Facebook and Twitter as part of the overall digital strategy. Uh, are you encouraging uh, Facebook accounts already? Are there Facebook accounts for major destinations? There are about 600 million Facebook users all over the world and increasing every day. Yes, Your Honor. We are, we are, we are doing that already. Are you doing that already? Because I remember last year when I asked that, the person who answered said that he has no budget for this. Uh, obviously, the person is not uh, familiar with the media. The other observation I have, uh, Mr. Secretary, is that a lot of the successful uh, tourist uh, programs have been LGU driven. Have you uh, looked into this? Uh, am I correct in uh, making this observation? For example, in the case of uh, Bohol, in the case of uh, Cebu, and many destinations, a lot of them are LGU driven, especially with respect to the facilities and the ideas. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, uh, we've always maintained that the LGU is the key to tourism development. And we have seen, as you mentioned, the, uh, the leadership at the ground level being the, the key to uh, developing tourism. As you mentioned, Bohol uh, being one of them, uh, he was the former chair of the Tourism Committee in Congress. He's a very uh, 
active uh, <coughs> governor as far as uh, tourism development is concerned. Governor uh, William Fuerte of uh, also of Camarines is also a, uh, a very active uh, proponent. Uh, and, and mayors are very important, uh, especially because they are on the ground. They're the ones that are patrolling the, the beaches and making sure that there are no incursions uh, and making sure that the sanitation and the sewage treatment is, is properly maintained. And uh, how do you expect to do this? How do you encourage more of the NGOs to participate? Because that is going to help in your overall tourism budget if you lump up uh, your national budget. Uh, represented by the DOT and then uh, uh, include the LGU budget for tourism, uh, that, that would be quite sizable. In fact, I would presume that it might even be bigger than the budget of the DOT if we consider all these LGU tourism budgets. If we can have them really on board in the tourism promotion program. We, we are hoping that there will be this kind of convergence between the DOT and the LGU. Um, for our part, we'll be providing the, uh, the training manuals and the training programs for the L building the capacities of LGUs to develop tourism. Um, it's, it's really the, those LGUs that are serious about tourism that we expect will come on board and uh, take advantage of what the Department of Tourism has to offer. Now, can you offhand uh, tell us uh, who, are this, uh, who are the top LGUs as far as tourism pro uh, promotion is concerned? Maybe top 10 in the country? Are you willing to do that? Um, just off the top of my head, I can mention uh, in, in Palawan, we've got Bohol, we've got uh, Kamsor, we've got Cebu, um, Boracay, uh, Boracay is a municipality. Um, Yes, well, um, Davao, uh, which Davao, Davao is this, which Davao? Davao City. Uh, Ilocos Norte is also very active. Uh, Negros. So those are the... Which Negros? Uh, Negro Oriental. Oriental? Oriental, no. How about Kamigin? Kam Kamigin is part of the list, yes, Kamigin. It's next to Negros Oriental. Okay, so thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. We'd like to now recognize... Uh, we'd like to recognize Congressman Jaffa. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Now, uh, I will just give a question to uh, two concerns. One is about the uh, increase in the budget of uh, the DOT. Uh, I believe that there is an increase in the Office of the Secretary's budget uh, of about 13.9%. Why is it that this a place for the officers? I, I think the correct uh, figure is 6% according to my source behind me. I am not aware why uh, it is uh, uh, to that extent that you said. So 6%. How much of the 6% goes to the regional allocations? Uh, or are these all uh, devoted to programs? Uh, projects in the office of the secretary. Oh, when you say office of the secretary, do you mean the DOT proper relative to the rest of the group? We spend 212 million for regional offices. Uh, I see what you mean. Uh, the locally funded projects. Yes, uh, Your Honor, uh, you're right, it increased from 200 million to 212 million in the 2012 budget. This is where you get your 12%. Yes, uh, and a portion of this goes to the uh, Intramuros Park. Intramuros, how much? Intramuros is, is not included in the NCR budget. I think it has its own 
the Intramuros administration has its own budget. Okay. Now, how much of these locally funded projects are uh, given to the uh, regional uh, offices? Or all, of, all of it are being programmed and uh, dispensed in the office of uh, the central office. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, uh, most of the uh, projects uh, are for planning and uh, um, promotions. We we don't have any uh, locally funded uh, projects, uh, but the, the, the funds are downloaded from the central office to the regional offices, and the, the money is spent on, uh, on on planning and promotions. I was this about the cultural village project in Dabao. Uh, that might have come from Tiesa. Ah, okay. This was a congressional initiative that was uh, not released. Not released. A congressional session. session. Okay. Now, uh, going to the previous question of Congressman Balito and that of Congressman Bermuda. How does the armed provinces access to the budget of uh, or funding of the DOD problem? I'm asking this question because the autonomous region has its own department of tourism also. Are they not qualified to uh, be shared in the budget of the central office? Since the Army is an autonomous region, it gets its budget from the uh, allocation for ARM. They are not one of the uh, regions uh, under the DOT. There is a Secretary of Tourism in ARM. Yeah, I know. I know. So therefore, you treat them as independent of the Department of Tourism National. And then we're no longer part of the Republic of the Dominions. Autonomous, uh, Mr. Yeah. Your Honor. Its autonomy doesn't warrant the segregation or the privation <laughs> of the areas comprising the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The national agencies of government, particularly the departments, should take into consideration the legal budget that Congress is giving the autonomous region. If you allow them to exist, and develop tourism in their area on their own, then it's just like abandoning our Muslim brothers, more particularly the Muslim provinces in Mindanao. And this, this, this is the reason why uh, the uh, peace and order uh, situation in the region is not uh, being solved up to now. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's a political question that I would rather, uh, if you don't mind, not answer. My, my point, uh, Mr. Secretary, I, I hope you don't mind. I have been in Congress since 1992. I have returned to Congress again for the second term. And I witnessed for myself that there are departments of the national government whose attitude towards the armed provinces are really unwanted. They don't even consider us to have a society as part of the Republic of the Philippines. Now, Mr. Secretary, since we are still part of the Republic, and considering the legal budget from the autonomous region given to the Department of Tourism, the Department of Tourism National should not leave the autonomous uh, provinces also behind. Considering that we have been talking about gateway. When you talk of gateway, then Tabi Tabi, which the, the province that I represent, is the gateway to the Pimp Iaga region, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia. It's Tabi Tabi, the gateway. Yet nothing is being, uh, is being remarked. Or tabi -tabi. Now, you talk of peace and order. If peace and order in Central Mindanao may not affect the peace and order in Tabi-Tabi. Peace and order in Basilan 
and Solomo do not attack Tawi-Tawi. We are in peace, boy. We are living in peace, in harmony with one another. Yet, in our promotion, Mr. Secretary, I have seen, I have witnessed that we, are, we always have the Binta. The richness of our cultural heritage, which emanated originally from the people in southern villages, are being used to promote our tourism. Yet nothing, not a single centavo, is a mark for the people living in the area. Why is this so? This is part of our mentality that we have developed all through the years, the bias, our social bias towards the Muslims in the country. I think that it's time that we, could, we should correct this kind of attitude, Mr. Secretary. And uh, Tawi Tawi being an island province comprising more or less 307 islands during all time. <laughs> In less than that during high time. We call it the island world in waiting. Waiting for, for progress and possibility of their homeland. I hope Mr. Secretary and the new stewardship will pave the way for Tabi Tabi province to rendezvous with its destiny in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Just for your Honor's information, the KSI has allotted 12 million for the Turtle yeah. Islands Development uh, with the Mindanao Authority. We have allotted 12 million pesos. I was supposed to visit the Turtle Islands because of weather uh, have, have been prevented. The, the Turtle Islands. Turtle Island uh, uh, Ecotourism. For the autonomous region, of course, to the autonomous region or uh, no, directly to Tawi Tawi.